previous speakers were incredibly elegant and eloquent, including Robin with his very good opening statement. I'm not going to repeat the points except to say, Robin, I too, as Rosie said, I congratulate you. There were more New Yorkers like you who fight back, who stand up. This city would be a very different city for all New Yorkers. So thank you for your courage. There are serious and substantial questions about what happened. Number one, entrapment. Whether or not what was going on was entrapment. Entrapment is illegal. Number two, as Richard said, Rosie said, on the eve of the 40th celebration, and it seems the same issue, specifically gay men, are targeted. And their targets are where they go for recreational and expressive activity. That was part of what happened 40 years ago at the Stonewall Rebellion. It appears that the police campaign has the same homophobic overtones and stereotypic overtones. But in addition to the individual rights, and I think that what Assemblyperson Gottfried said, it's very important that District Attorney Morgenthau go through those files and reach out to vacate whatever orders were entered if other people like Robert somehow, with legal advice, decided to plead rather than plead not guilty. But second, what I want to connect it to is the nuisance abatement law. This is not just about targeting gay men and arresting them, but they use those arrests as prerequisites to go into court under a very suspicious nuisance abatement law, known as the Vordy Law, and to argue that given these arrests, the adult entertainment video store should be closed down. That tramples on First Amendment rights. First Amendment rights are easy when the speech is popular and is acceptable. The real test to government is when the speech is not popular and the speech is not acceptable by the majority. Triple X video stores are protected by the First Amendment, but we've seen the Giuliani administration and very authoritarian and repressive tactics in the 90s tried to close the adult entertainment industry, and the court said no. I am surprised that the Bloomberg administration, especially someone who is an icon in the First Amendment area, Bloomberg News, if we forget for a moment, is protected by the First Amendment, to be what appears to be insensitive to the First Amendment. The government's test is when the speech is not popular. It doesn't have to be my cup of tea or your cup of tea, but it is someone's cup of tea. And therefore, government should not trample on that fundamental cornerstone of American constitutional jurisprudence, the First Amendment. And I'm particularly troubled by the fact that these sting operations are set up not only to create the havoc, the trauma, and the illegality and unconstitutionality that it did to individuals like Robert, but it's all part of a scheme to go after the adult entertainment business when they know they can't do it directly because the First Amendment prohibits it. So what they do is they do it indirectly, such as this. I say no to that, and I hope that all New Yorkers, whether you agree with this kind of expression or not, will stand strong for the principle of free expression for everyone. Thank you very much.